Uh, have I talked, have I ever told you about our Lord and Savior Hydro Flask? Have you seen my Mention Hydro it. Flask? Mention Hydro Flask. Yeah. Seize the moisture. Moisten the day. I don't know. <laughs> Trying to find sponsorships, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Pure mints. We like, I use them. Well, my throat gets dry doing podcasting for hours, so I eat Pure mints. <laughs> Low carb for my diabetic needs. Uh, all right. Okay, let's rock and roll, man. Let's do this. This is JP Abood of Traveler and Among These Ashes, and you are listening to the Heavy Metal and Horror Podcast. I am Montag, Master of Illusion. What goes up must come down, but not always. And Dreadbull. And that's right, no Chop Top. No Chop Top again. Son of a bitch. Hashtag best day ever. <laughs> Fuck you, Chop Top. Yeah, this is going to be way better. I'm sick. <laughs> the, you're not sick. The oh. albatross falls from our necks. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I think he might have pulled his groin last night for about <laughs> 20 minutes. And that's what he's sick. Uh-huh, groin tug. Yeah, oh, right. I had two Saturdays last night. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, kiddies, we want to welcome you to Heavy Metal, Metal. Horror. Horror. Oh, tonight's show is going to be good. We are going to talk new about... New topic. Yeah, brand new topic. Um, top five? Yeah. Another top five for us. This is our top five front men. Now, now... Before anyone goes crazy here, yeah, front man is easy. the term is a, the the nomenclature for someone who usually the singer of a band, usually the face, the front of a band. Um, they're responsible for sometimes the uh, you know perhaps the antics for interacting with the crowd, doing these kinds of things. So front person would be more accurate, which is fine. But our top five front men. Um, and I guess we should talk about that a little bit. I mean, I, I chimed in with with what I look at as a as a front man. What are some of the things you look at, Dreadbull, when when you, when you made your list? What are the kinds of things that stand out to you that make a good front person? Yeah. So obviously, a a, a comfort level on the stage. You got to look like you can't be awkward up there. You gotta. You can't ever have moments where you don't know what to do with yourself. You know, I've seen some front men, like when a front man starts playing air guitar, that you lose points. Points, you, you can't start playing air guitar. Sorry, Chuck Billy and your little tiny mic, mic stand, but you're playing <laughs> Not guitar. Not Sammy Hagar. Guitar. Sammy Hagar did a lot of air guitar when he was with Van Halen. I know. Uh, even yeah. uh, Rob Halford did a little air guitar on occasion. Okay. All uh, right. But yeah, no, find something else to do with yourself, you know, whatever it is to dance a jig whatever you got to do don't play air guitar on stage please uh yeah there's a you're that get, big vindicator <laughs> no fucking air guitar <laughs> don't play the, uh, don't let me catch you playing air guitar speaking of vindicator we should tell we should say while we're here hey sure. vindicator august they're coming to the maple grove tavern in the cleveland area you gotta go see anyone in Ohio, Northern Ohio. Yeah, come see, see Victicator. Okay, so enough of there. There we go. Okay, so back to no air guitar and what other what yeah. other rules? Uh, that have? goes with just overall presence. Uh, I, I, you know it when you see it. When someone's comfortable up there and they have a presence, you just know it. Uh, interactions with the fans, with the crowd. You got to know how to get the crowd pumped up. Uh, you got to know how to interact with them, keep them engaged. You know. Um. Yeah, those are the biggies. Uh, what else do you have? Yeah, the, the you know, the vocalists tend to be the front men tend to be the face of a band, and generally that's that's the rule because you know most times you're playing guitar, you're not going to have also the wherewithal to to uh, also engage the band. Few few can do that. There are a few mm -hmm. out there, but. I, I agree 100%. Yeah, you got to feel like the stage is your home. You got to interact with the audience and make them feel loved and appreciated uh, and welcome mm -hmm. and, and invite them and to kind of show off your personality, whatever that happens to be for the picketer band. And also your your movements accentuate the overall performance. 
of of the of the band. So, uh, because the focal point tends to become on the person who is singing, uh, most often. Yeah. So, and you've got to be a dynamic, engaging personality for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, yeah, that's that's it's that's a big part of being. And well, can you think of a band where it's not the singer? who you would consider the front man of a band. I was thinking about that today and I was kind of stumped. I can't think. Of I think there a, are a few, a few, a few bands possibly make a case for like Angus Young and ACDC. Yeah. I was Even, thinking you know, Scotty, and, like Scotty and for anthrax. Okay. In, in a lot yeah. of ways. Um, he kind of okay. comes off as that. Yeah. That's a, that's not a, yeah, that's a pretty um, good. Yeah. And there are a lot of bands that don't, that have great singers, but not necessarily a front man. Like, like the band is equally important. And now case in point, Opeth, mm -hmm. it's like uh, Michael Ackerfeld, please come on the show. Please come on the oh, show. Oh God, please. I know. I know. Um, he, he's tremendous and he's dry. His sense of humor is dry and it's so funny, mm -hmm. but I would not call him a front man because he stands there and just jams. Like he's not doing any antics. He's not, his engagement with the crowd is between songs where he talks, does his little talk. And when I saw them, uh, you know, we saw them at the Ghost Reveries tour. After the first song, he said, uh, okay, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> and, <laughs> and like, took two questions of the audience. People are raising his <laughs> like, okay, go. You know, I'm like, that's who, great. who does that? That yeah, was engaging, great. but I would not necessarily call him a great front man in that regard, maybe because it's, not by the way we are defining it. So, but th that whole band is so mesmerizing. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone is doing their part. Everyone is just right in there. So, yeah, I would say. I mean, my favorite band, Dream Theater. Uh, you know, James is is a fine singer, but you know, when there there's so much music that happens in that band, there are so many you know minutes that go by where there is no singing. But you know, he kind of has to go find something to do. Often he'll go off stage for a bit or go over mm -hmm. and get a drink of water or whatever beverage he has. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe it's uh, Petrucci who you could consider the front man now. I would say maybe Mike Portnoy when he was with them. Yeah, and he's the drummer. In the back. Yeah, you know. Nobody so... puts the drummers in the back. Wait, no, that's <laughs> a wrong movie. Right. Yeah. Ex I, yes, I would. I would agree because there's a band of every one of those people are so talented. Mm -hmm. that they can all they're all stars you know they're yeah. all they're all in that in that role um yeah i, to, I totally I totally agree with that and yeah. there's just a charisma that uh, a good a good lead singer a good front man just has that charisma and his mm -hmm. their their whatever their personality is it comes out yeah you said yeah. with acker felt it's a dry sense of humor that gives him his charisma and that's his personality precisely precisely yeah and let it come through let it come out and share it with the crowd you know exactly, whatever that yeah. personality is like like when they, before they played the um it was off a of ghost reverie the uh the song about the uh the demon um uh you know i forget in the spell um yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway he said uh before you play this next song i'd like to apologize to all the christians in the audience <laughs> it's a very satanic song you know <laughs> like you know, it's like oh okay yeah 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 i, I get it another I, guy that almost made my list that i think would be an honorable mention along those lines is uh devin townsend mm. uh, really i just kind of discovered him in the last couple of years uh, i've watched a lot of his stuff i haven't seen him live but i've watched a lot of his his live stuff like on youtube online uh he did like a whole uh, lockdown uh, concert just out of his own home studio during COVID. He did a whole show by by himself, but uh, his live show is really like his sense of humor. His he's got a very quirky sense of humor, and that really comes out. And there's a lot of interaction with the crowd, and everybody's dressed funny. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of people are dressed really funny. He's just not afraid to be goofy on stage, yeah. and he's always yeah. smiling and laughing. And there's that comfort level. Right? Exactly. You can just be yeah. yourself on stage. Right. And that is so attractive, mm -hmm. you know, and like the, 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 I love the black crows. One of my favorite bands. And we have, the, you know, the, there's the singer who's just in the groove. Like he's like, you know, everyone's jamming. It's a jam band. And he just sits there right in the pocket. You can yeah. just see him like getting along and just, and, and just feeling that music, you know, um, Again, and that's the an... thing: being immersed in the music that's that yeah. you're that you're partaking in. You know, you you can tell when a when a singer is they're into it and they're feeling it just like you are in the crowd, and when they're just up there 
doing their job. You yeah, know? right. There, there's a different feel. There's there. a difference, you right? Know it when you see it, and I think I think our top five lists, um, we're going to have a little crossover, uh, and but I think we're going to have to surprise one another with some of our I'm, choices. There may only be one. There may only be one crossover here. Yeah, I agree. I think, uh, you know? and anyone who's listened to our show long enough knows what the crossover is going to be. So, yeah, um, all on. right. So, Dreadbull, let's start with your number five. We're going to work our way to the top. Okay. Your well, number five, top five uh, front person, front man. My number five, I am going with Mr. Phil Anselmo of Pantera. Mm, okay. uh, first time I saw this guy uh, it was at one of the Ozfests at Blossom here in Ohio at an Ozfest. Uh, and they weren't even the headliner. You know, they were they were playing like, you know, in the evening that there were probably a couple two three more bands so not even the whole venue was filled when they play when they came out still a little bit daylight out but the the effort that phil put into his performance and this might have been maybe the far beyond driven era of pantera if i recall um it was 100 percent like full effort full energy you know fills his screams were he gave it everything he had and like his engagement with the crowd and like i was so impressed with you know a big festival like that you're not even headlining the place isn't even really that full when you come out kind of daylight it, you wouldn't know it this was dime bag was still with him obviously and stuff and i was just i was kind of blown away by by their performance it was more than i was expecting and uh you I are just a big pantera fan I mean, yeah, I remember you I like, yeah. Cowboys from Hell. You you played the you played that record to death. Yeah, I've always know? liked Pantera, and that was yeah, my first chance to actually see them live. And I was with my buddy that is a diehard Pantera. He lives and breathes Pantera, and uh, uh, we had a great time watching that. That was such a great show. I mean, Phil hitting those screams like he gave it everything he had. You know, you you'd think a singer like that on a tour would kind of hold back a little bit to save their voice, and I get that. You know, sometimes you have to, but he didn't. He just he let it he let it rip, man. Like it Mariah Carey, so good. When, yeah, and Celine right, Dion, right, right. sure, yeah. My heart will go on, but my voice won't. <laughs> so yeah, I I loved it. I thought that was a, it was a great performance. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that show. So excellent. yeah, number five for me. Phil. All right, yeah, excellent. Uh, my my number five is not a man at all, front man. It's front it's front woman. Uh oh, we might have a crossover. Uh oh, this might be a two. This might be. <laughs> Really? Are we Go talking ahead. about Tatiana Schmeiler? We are talking. Yes. Um, oh boy. Okay. I should not, have known. I should have known this one. Might I, make you know, before. when I first you know? saw the video, um, just another probably Pisces. No, just another. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. It was just that that video. I'm like, who is this band? I'm like, oh, okay. Well, oh, oh, she's she's gorgeous. Um, and then like she comes yeah. out with this voice, like. <gasps> Oh, and then she get the clean voice, like oh, when she's interacting with the crowd, those little little shots of her smiling. But then I became an instant fan, like oh, okay, these guys are great. Listening to Pisces, I'm like oh, th th these guys are phenomenal. And then seeing so many live videos, watching her live, she engages with the with the audience. I mean, when going back years ago, when they were just still kind of making it, still coming up, playing these smaller outdoor venues. It didn't matter if there were 50 people, 500 people. Yeah. The band puts on a hell of a show and she's engaging that audience. I saw a video of her. It must have been in just like a little tiny venue of maybe a couple hundred people. And they, there was the person filming was was right right at the stage looking straight up at her and i think she did pisces. This was back she had like long hair at the time, looked way different. This was early in their career. And uh man, she just put when she's when she was prepping to go into those real forceful death vocals, you could see her getting herself ready, like her posture kind of changed. So she was putting everything she had into it in this tiny venue. And yeah, that's what I mean, man. The, the, the effort uh, that you put into it, no matter who's out there in the crowd. Uh, and she always knows what to do with herself. She never looks yeah. lost out there. Like yeah. she's always She'll do a little shimmy, which yeah, it's always I, sexy as hell. <laughs> oh thank you. Gosh. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like watching their performance uh, perennial, you know, yeah. when she's in that gold uh, lame yeah, suit. Yeah, right, right, right. And <laughs> she's like kind of doing that little shimmy, like, oh, don't, 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 don't cut away. Just show me the shimmy. 
screen. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Uh, but it's yes, yes, and, and she does the whole like movement with her body as she's kind of coming in as she's growing, coming back to life mm -hmm. as that you know that beautiful plant. It mes mesmerizing, you know, interacts with the audience, smiles, makes eye contact. Yeah. Um, yeah, and she's sexy as hell. It's like a uh, perfect package. And what an amazing voice. What a set of lungs on her. Oh, my God. And, and live, and, she sounds every bit. I've yeah, never yes. heard a live performance of hers that was nothing but stellar. Yeah, every bit is good. And that band you know? is so tight with all those yeah. time changes and syncopations. Um, they are phenomenal. One of my favorite bands uh, in the, the, that I've just come across and accidentally found in the you know a couple years ago i'm like so glad that i did it's like when i found accidentally found came across opeth like well opeth who are these guys <laughs> you know so yeah um just love ginger so number five for me tatiana schmeilich yeah and she's always 100 percent engaged she's always yeah. grooving to the music always yeah. dancing it's all organic there's no you know stupid choreographed pre-choreographed dance moves. right it's just <sighs> all her grooving out and she's got great moves damn she's good yeah, yeah. uh tatiana We've reached oh. out to you before. <laughs> I know you're busy. I know you're touring and crazy, and you're way bigger than us. We're just a bunch of slubs, but we'd love to have you on. So come on the show. We'll have a good time. Yeah. Um, there's my number five. So That's all right, a good uh, one. Number four for you there, Dreadbull. Number four. I am going with Maynard James Keenan Tool. Uh, hmm. This guy, I mean, okay. he's weird as hell. He's unusual. He's eccentric. But you, you can't take your eyes off of him when he's when 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 they're performing live. That's the guy you stare at the whole freaking time. I mean, you might glance at the drummer. He's great. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know. Do you, does anybody really pay attention to the guitarist and tool? I mean, no offense, but Maynard is is, is is he's just mesmerizing to watch. You know, he's he's like a performance actor up there. He's doing some kind of artsy fartsy. Uh, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. interpretive dance of some sort, but uh, you like you don't quite understand it, but you know it's profound. Whatever it is you're looking at, you know. Yeah, and I know even in the like the newer the new tour they just did, he he stayed in the back a lot more. Yes, like he he was trying to remove himself some, but you're right. still looking at him. He's like, and he's wearing he's like high. some kind of weird like helmet and like almost like. Like I saw him with pads like, and like mohawk and st weird stuff. Going yeah, on. I was like, and like, wait, wait a minute, you're behind, you're behind everybody. Like, wait a minute, wait, what? And I was, yeah, I was, I was curious because when I saw them, it was on Ozfest. He came out, yes, dressed the, up, the yeah, televangelist, the, the, the televangelist with the big yeah. wig. That was like, an that, Akron. Yeah, that was brilliant. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was still very much up front in that in that show. Yeah, you know, and if time. you see the earlier videos, like when he had the mohawk, when very young, like when when uh, sober that uh, you know that uh, under tool under I know, tool, that album, yeah, um, came out. Uh, what album was that? That was the uh, their their second and album. It's just like in a like in a kind of crouched down, yeah, yeah, just, just twitching around, like singing, <laughs> yeah, singing sober, yeah. It's yeah. just like what, yeah. Um, that's an interesting choice because I know he's he tool tools. I, I like the band. Sometimes we've just we've talked about some of their albums. Mm -hmm. They they kind of get a little sidetracked and um, get enamored yeah, right. with their own brilliance a little bit uh -huh. sometimes. Um, I get it. I understand. I, they I, lose us plebs, I think, at times. With their, <laughs> yeah, uh, but they, their... but there's so much good stuff to their music. Um, but that's an interesting mm -hmm. choice because last time I saw a tour, that yeah, he was behind the stage, you know, still still wearing stuff. Yeah, like like a costume, mm -hmm. but behind everything. And uh, so I don't know if it was just stage fright or he just didn't want to be looked at. You know, I don't know the. I think it was just a conscious. He wanted the other members of the band to get more, to have more attention. You know, mm. I think that was a conscious decision by him. Okay. From what I've read, uh, I would think it'd be really hard as a performer to try to have that same energy behind the stage yeah. than being out in front and engaging everyone. You know, like right. that you got to feed off that energy in some level. Yeah. Well, Tool's never been a like a high energy band. Per no, se, no, it's know? true. It's much more kind of like cerebral get high and just kind of vibe you know yeah with that, with that music that sounds good like a good plan <laughs> there you go Throw on yeah, some tool yeah. Later. <laughs> that's right but yeah i just think he's a real compelling guy to watch he's like watching a really good actor like there's just yeah you know, you're just like what the hell is he gonna do next like this is it's, it's weird and interesting and i don't oh. get it but it's something's going on there you know that i don't <laughs> quite understand but I like it. I like okay. it. It's a good pick. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. My number four, number um, four. you're going to love because I know what's coming. 
I know what's coming. I know you one know? of these. I know who one of these is. You know be. what's coming? As <laughs> as the best line in the movie that they started in in 1978 says, "You're looking for someone, but it's not Kiss." <laughs> the star child himself, Mr. Paul Stanley. Uh, <laughs> um, big, big shocker! I can see. Yeah, your, yeah. I can see the surprise <laughs> on your face. <laughs> uh, you know. I like I like what Kiss wanted to do as a band. They wanted to be the band that they had never seen. They wanted everyone to be the stars, and like like it mirrored it to the Beatles, where they have four individual personalities. They you know, and everyone had to have their own thing, uh, and bring in the whole comic book stuff and the armor and the blood, and everyone's wearing the makeup. You know, it was hard for a ten year old me not to just fall in love with them. But as a front man, you know, the, the singing chores are split between Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. Um, but Stanley is the, the better engaging frontman. He does sing most of the music. Mm -hmm. He's the one engaging, you know, they're all doing their thing, but Paul Stanley's the one who interacts with the audience. He's the one who gets on the zip line and kind of flies out to the middle of the audience to sing a song or two. And he's doing the, you know, selling the stories. And I mean, you know, if Chop were here, because we could do some really great paul stanley impressions um like if paul stanley like what if kiss were to sing black sabbath you know and we were taking little sound bites from like alive and alive too you know um <laughs> and just trying to put black sabbath songs coming out of his like how would he introduce black sabbath you know all right we got some good looking girls any of you girls want to meet us at the sabbath you know it's like it just, you know, it became comical, but Paul Stanley does engage the audience. He's really, he's, he's riveting. He's plays to the camera. They both ham up for the camera. He and Gene both are total hams, but it works. It's funny. Um, and I think they know, you know, they're there to entertain. They are complete entertainers and he doesn't spit blood or do anything like that, but um, he certainly engages the audience. And <laughs> I know. Hey, I gained respect for for Paul Stanley when he sang about Folgers Coffee. That really <laughs> changed my whole viewpoint of. You Paul know, it Stanley. is the best part of waking up. It really is. Yeah. I agree. You know, <laughs> I love my Folgers. Love my Folgers Coffee. So, now, yeah, especially now that Paul you've seen Stanley that commercial, inspired. right? That never yeah. got produced. Uh -huh. I, when I get up in the morning, I sing that while I'm making circus. my coffee. Right. While I'm scooping my grounds, man, into the filter. I'm singing that. Do you when you're Thinking done? About do, you go, do you go magic? Do you like? Fuck? I can't pull that off. No, that's, nobody that's can. only for the professional. That's why it's Paul fucking Stan. <laughs> exactly. He I can pull it off. <laughs> I I would love to hear them do that live. You know, <laughs> that would be great. Would be, maybe we can get a hold of uh, Mr. Speed, the Kiss tribute band. And say, can you can you do the Folger song? And can you do the song? You know, a couple of weeks ago on Unsane Radio, we we covered Kiss meets the Fan of the Park, and uh, everyone wants to punish me for that. But um, <laughs> rightfully so. It's horrible. But um, you know, there's a, I don't know where I was going to go with it. And I'm not even high. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, wow. it's, um, I know, it just fell right apart there. But uh, yeah, Paul Stanley is a, a great front man for the band. He he um, just kind of brings that rock and roll swagger and attitude, the, the comfort on the stage, you know, and like the stage is his home. And he does a lot of the interaction with the camera, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So it's, there you go. Stanley. Here's my number there four. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, number three for you, Dread Bull. All right. I think this one's going to surprise you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pose a question to you who in the early eighties, let's say this was be during this band's heyday, late seventies, early Ooh. to mid eighties, late seventies, early eighties. Mm -hmm. This was their heyday. And they also had probably the most charismatic frontman in all of hard rock heavy metal. Who was the most charismatic frontman in the early eighties? Charismatic. And I'll include, I'll say hard rock heavy metal. So that might, that'll open it up a little I, bit. More. Charismatic. Okay. Yeah. Well, David Lee Roth. There it is. David Lee Roth is my yeah. number three. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that the, he, he, he checks all the boxes as a front man. Everything yeah. we talked about yep. his engagement, his theatrics, the costumes, you know, he always wear flamboyant stuff, uh, dancing around stage. he never, he never stood still, you know, throwing the roundhouse kicks everywhere. Mm -hmm. And he was just a great charismatic front man. Right. I mean, I know he's kind of a flake now, but the dude in the, <laughs> in the heyday of, of Van Halen, man, in that six, six year period, he was on, they, those guys were untouchable. Yes. David you know? Lee, I, I had a hard time squeezing him out of the top five. 
Yeah. I had to make room for Tatiana, but David Lee, it was it, it, there. I, I totally agree with everything. And when you watch those videos, like from the era of like, um, from the fair warning, you know, that, that album is like probably my favorite Van Halen album. Cause I love unchained and hear about it later. Yeah. There yes. were like, it must have been like on Don Kirshner's rock concert or something like that way back <laughs> in the day. They had like a like a four or five songs live performance that they filmed um, that MTV would show. Unchained, hear about it later. So this is love, you know, and they would just yeah. play these. And that was like, I'm, you know, 15, 16 years old watching this going, that's what I want to fucking do. Like, yeah, I, I'd be mm -hmm. this guy. And But you watch what he's wearing. I mean, he's watching, wearing his like skin tight, you know, spandex and because I know he talked about that, like how he wanted to position his package right. to make it make it appetizing for the ladies in the front row, his banana and apples, as he called it, and how what best how best to do that. But he's doing these high kicks and and like he's not you know he starts off wearing the glam shirts, he strips down and he's strutting around, got the big hair, yep. you know, doing the doing the kicks, doing the sword stuff. But I agree, he you cannot not look at david lee roth you, you know because he's out there strutting around doing his thing mm -hmm. now van halen live was a pretty sloppy band i mean they were pretty sloppy and he was not a great singer sometimes live but it didn't matter it, yeah there was it, just it the just, show they were it the just show didn't matter man. those guys filled stadiums that's my yeah. one regret i was a little too young mm -hmm. to be able to go to a concert and see those guys in their heyday in the david lee roth era yes. i would love to yeah. have seen them yeah live back then we uh, were about a, about eight show. or nine eight, eight seven or eight years too young yeah for that to be able to go um because i don't think even in 1984 it would have been a good show to see uh, yeah that, i would have been 14 tour. at the time yeah, yeah. right so, still a little right. too young i mean i wasn't allowed to Could go have, take yeah. myself to the concert our parents like, would have had to drive us to the concert <laughs> exactly i yeah it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been ideal um because i wasn't really you know allowed to go to stuff like that at the time so no i agree man david lee roth um fantastic from mm -hmm. and i saw van halen in 88 and at the the uh world series of uh or yeah it was monsters of rock when oh, they, yeah, they monsters headlined rock. monsters of rock and um, you know, Van Halen with Sammy Hagar is the, just a different band. It just is. It is. But I will say it was at the end of a very long, hot day. It was like 104 degrees. Everyone's dying of heat, you know, mm -hmm. and they had fountains going. Everyone just exhausted, sunburnt all the fuck. Cause it was at the rubber bowl, you know, sat through kingdom. Come, oh, same as Ozfest. That, you know, Dokken, yeah. Um, Metallica scorpions, you know, just a long day. And here comes van halen like at nine o'clock at night and puts on a two-hour energy burst it was like it was like straight lining sugar it was just wow. like a big punch of energy and they, they it was phenomenal they put on a great show and and we were exhausted but i'm like i am so glad that we stayed and and watched this Fan, fantastic i cannot say anything bad about that performance but um as a band i liked them with david lee roth i think their music was just better it um just heavier and harder so yeah i totally totally am with you okay on that one uh dread um uh, my number three um like my number four this this singer also wears uh paint on his face um and what i like so much about him is his engagement with the audience and thank you cleveland for my black heart <laughs> it's the king king diamond yeah, yeah, I knew he would make your list. Um, yeah, he is so engaging and so fun to watch. Uh, I've seen him, God, I don't know how many times, four or five times. Um, and he is really good at connecting with the audience. And it is very theatrical. The, the shows are like minstrel shows. It's it's horror movie sets. You got a grave or a cemetery. You got a castle. You've got a uh, an oldest saint asylum. Whatever you have, there's a background. You know, inverted crosses, and here comes King with his like microphone made of bones, and just everything about the the King uh, comes out. But he's so personable, and makes the audience feel like they he's there for them. And they are the special ones. And and I really think it comes from a genuine place. You know, I mean, it really does. He just really appreciates his fans, I, I think. It, you can't, well, you can fake it, I guess. But it, sound, it feels legit because it's continual. 
It's not just like one time, hey, thank you for coming. No, he's engaged the entire concert. Whether engage with the other players, you know, Andy LaRock is playing a solo when he'll play around with them, and or when they wheel out the bitch baby, you know, or grandma, they wheel out grandma, and he's the theatrical stuff. It's all there, um, and dresses up for Santa when he thinks no presents like for Christmas. You know, the whole the whole thing is is fantastic. And I remember the last time I saw him, it was at the House of Blues, and um, it was on the Puppet Master tour, like second time through, I think. And so I had a big sign. On one side said, Abigail, you bitch. On the other side said, welcome home, King. And so I'm like holding it up. And King looked up. I'm up the upper, upper upper tier. And he looks up at it, points at it, and claps for me. And, like, and points to go. me. That is engagement, you know. Um, so, and he's just funny. I mean, he does, I think he's very yeah. comical. A front man too he just mm -hmm. plays that role of like you know <laughs> very well completely at home on stage and uh just makes you feel like he's grateful that you showed up to watch him perform that's awesome and you don't that's pretty rare i mean all in all you know some band some bands or some front men are good at engaging with the audience and having some interaction but to really make you feel appreciated to that level is pretty rare i think that, that, that there's not too many i don't think there's too many front men that that can pull that off with that kind of sincerity mm -hmm. yeah. and that and king is one of the one of those performers that i have somehow missed seeing live mm. you know like for whatever circumstances that i've never been able to see live regretfully yeah i mean yeah. that would be a really fun show well i, I know love their music we gotta go you gotta go see him i'll go with yeah. him i mean sometime hopefully when For the sure. new album comes out from what nikki law says oh, oh don't tease coming don't tease somebody is gonna be on <laughs> our show um yeah so there's number three King nice diamond great choice great yeah. choice okay number two we are working our way through this list we covered my number two tatiana ah. she is my number two she made it all the way to two for me she mm. is just i don't know whatever you can't take your eyes off her for a number of reasons <laughs> uh you know a long list of reasons that she i is try to watch absolute badass yeah. on stage yeah i like their music i i i i, I like the progression of their music mm -hmm. um the new album took me a couple of listens to get into i it, king of everything i thought it was a, is a spectacular album this album took me a couple of listens but when i got into it, like okay i can see the progression yeah this band's progressing mm -hmm. becoming a little more complex yeah in their in their in the way they cr construct songs um yeah just just uh phenomenal yeah I can't not. So yeah, I think what what can you say about? Yeah, we've know. already said it. Yeah. Um, my but number two is going to be yourself in trouble. <laughs> exactly. I know. <laughs> yeah, I gotta. I'm just gonna calm down. Uh, my it's number two. Is probably it's going your... on the internet. Be careful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're gonna get canceled. Um, <laughs> my number two is your number one. Oh, this is your number two. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you'll be like, when you hear number one, you're like, oh, I get it. Okay. 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 Uh, Let's go. Scream for me, Long Beach. I think yeah. what you said it. Uh, Bruce Dickinson, the uh, master showman in front of Iron Maiden. You could not ask for a more energetic performer, frontman, cheerleader, fucking exhausting, watching him run back and forth on I the stage. I don't know how that dude does it. Engaging uh, yeah. at, what, see, 58. He's 65. Yeah. You know, um, he's, you know, he can get social security. Well, no, he can't, <laughs> but he's out there running around. And like, when you see him, here's someone who's completely at home on the stage, who, yeah. who is a performer. He's doing these big theatrical movements because that was intentional. His big theatrical movements are so the people way in the back can see him do stuff. Yeah. And, and when you see like the video, like I love my second favorite live album, Live After Death, and then Rock and Rio, I think is one of their finest performances. When you see the video of like Fear the Dark and you see him like get onto the camera <laughs> and like the camera's on a trolley, you know, a dolly yeah. and the, you're on a, you know, the track and it's just going back and forth and he's just interacting with the camera and the people. Um, you know, he's just embodies everything that is metal and rock and roll yeah. and just engages and his rants <laughs> are legendary. Um, <laughs> Now you can even like find bootlegs. <clears throat> They'll say Bruce Rant. Everyone knows. 
Bruce is going to rant about something. Yeah, um, yeah. Never he, fails. He's very opinionated. He, he yeah. knows what he likes, right. but he doesn't. And he stands up for people, you know, in the in the in the show, um, getting bullied or <coughs> excuse me, mm-hmm. getting uh, uh know, the harassed. show we saw in yeah. Cleveland when he was solo, his solo tour. Um, I, was it uh, accident of birth? Is that when we saw them solo? He had Adrian with him. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and he uh, he was screaming at somebody right behind us, who was uh, apparently messing with someone way smaller than them because he threw his water bottle at the person, hit me. But he yells at like, hey, fat ass, pick on somebody your own size. There was somebody right behind us that was messing with somebody, apparently. And he was, he was, <laughs> yeah, he was all over their case. Like, you have that water bottle, right? Yeah. I had him sign it when we met him after the show. I had him sign <laughs> the water nice. bottle. I said, nice. you threw this at fat ass. But it hit me. <laughs> I hope you weren't talking to me. I wasn't yeah. doing anything to anybody. <laughs> yeah. We're just trying to watch a show and the people in front of us are making out. Let's make it. Remember that the whole time you sit there kissing the whole time, like yeah. Jesus, why the fuck? Why are you standing? Oh, here? that that pit was, a, I mean, was smothered. I never felt I so smothered, crushed, and hot. We couldn't yeah. move. I mean, it's, no, physically could not move. We're just like, oh god, yeah. these bodies, and we're just sitting, we're just there trying sweating. to get to breathe was yeah, hard. Just, you just know? to hold out your arms, just to take a breath. Yeah, yeah, it was, awful. That was um, rough. Yeah, he did the same thing when we saw him. I we might have it might have been the tour we saw. What we see the somewhere back in time. Um with at blossom remember that there was uh i think another incident yes. oh uh, great show of a security guard harassing a fan and he was like yelling Ooh. at the security guard you know uh, yeah he's, he's, he's always so <laughs> yeah yeah so bruce dickinson i mean just the theatrics his mm. stamina is legendary God. vocal performance he sings just as good as he did you know 40 years ago uh may not be able to hit all the high notes mm-hmm. but after the surgery he had on his throat in his recovery yeah, after having throat cancer yeah you from, know from kind of like yes yeah. <laughs> is, you know? is that what is that what can yeah happen? yeah <laughs> i mean if you're gonna get throat cancer i guess they should gonna go awesome. dive 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 is gonna come back to haunt him no muff too tough well, well apparently well, maybe found one maybe there was that one muff too many that, t- tough muffs that perhaps. one that one bad muff got him <laughs> um but he came comes back um, you know the quick costume changes, and now that that's yeah. costume changes is now so more prevalent. Like on, if you watch Live After Death, he really just kind of wears the mask on Power Slave, mm-hmm. you know. But now, like he, he he puts on that like the raincoat or or the or the the, the trooper, you know, the uniform, the mm-hmm. military uniform. It's, there's all these costume changes um, that accentuate the song, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just mesmerizing. Yeah, the guy was just he was born to be on stage doing something. You know, he was born to be in front of people uh, doing something like I know he was like really me. interested right. in theater. Uh, uh, yeah, he's the ultimate front man. I mean, every quality we've talked about in all these other people, he embodies every, all of it. Like He's not lacking in any front man <laughs> quality that you would look for. He has it all, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah for me, he is the ultimate, like you said, energy to spare there's he's never he seems to be never be tired i I mean i read his biography and i'm like i'm exhausted reading this like how in the (laughs) hell can you do all this shit one person you know yeah go get your pilot's license and i'm gonna fly here just on a whim and then oh go do this thing and then fly back fencing i'll become a world-class fencer sure sleep sleep and food and bodily functions are just an afterthought to him i I don't know how he does it. Yeah, you got to fit it it's in. You unbelievable, got one life. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, he's got like five lifetimes worth of experience in, in yeah. one. He's just just amazing embracing, person. sucking it up. Yeah. Um, right. No, I totally get it. Uh, and and I'm guessing so. Bruce was your number one. Then. Number one, of course. Yeah. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Um, so I'm very interested here. Your number one. Okay. Um, this singer inspired a uh, rather insipid song by a horrible band. But it talked about his moves. This band has fronted, considered arguably one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time. Uh, these guys are like eighty fucking years old now playing. I'm talking Mick Jagger. Oh front wow! Of the okay. Rolling Stones as being the huh. first big front man, I think, of rock and roll. I mean, we had other characters. I mean, hey, you know, um, we we've got uh, these other great singers. Uh, I want to say, you know, um, with Chuck Berry. 
you know, little Richard, I think mm -hmm. those, those performers really, and Elvis, you know, those are the entertainers. I think those are, but when it comes to like this style, what we're talking about, hard rock, rock and roll blues, Rolling Stones are a great blues based rock band. Um, and who were inspired by American blues and turn it into something that American kids loved a decade later, you know, generation later. So he talk about stamina. This guy looks the same thin rail it's as he true. did when he was like 20 years old in 1960. <laughs> uh, you know, he's out there as, as this young kid in the early sixties playing still that rail thin energetic mm -hmm. he, the music comes on he just starts to move like yeah, it's like like a chicken yeah it's like he can't yeah. stop it's like yeah. it's just part of who he is yeah. is to move and a couple years ago they did a free show down in havana cuba and you can see it on youtube it is so worth the watch i mean the stones classically have been a they're a sloppy live band they just always have been um it doesn't matter you know but they, they sound tight. They sound really good. Now they have a great backing band. Don't get me wrong. So it's not, you know, there's some other members to the band that kind of full flesh out the sound um, or fill out the sound, but they sound tight. They sound good as they ever did. So I recommend that. It's called Havana Moon. Check it out, especially when you watch the very first track, um, Jumpin' Jack Flash, which is a great rock and roll song. They're top like 40 top 30 40 songs are like in the top 500 of all time like they are just they have some amazing songs yeah. so mick jagger you wow interesting choice yeah. yeah i've never been a huge rolling stone guy but uh it's hard to argue against a legend in the in the industry and yeah one of the most recognizable and famous you know frontman of all time so yeah i think he Absolutely. had to be inspirational but it, it comes naturally for him he's not putting on an act he's just out there doing his thing you know and and growing up in the household i did we listened to all kinds of stuff my dad was into all kinds of of rock yeah i was immersed know. into a, i was immersed into a lot of motown you know my parents yes. listened to a lot of motown yeah back when the I was supremes mm -hmm. you know diana ross yeah uh sam and dave you sam know and dave yeah temptations yeah uh, Motown, uh, classic rock, yeah, um, that was you know in our house. It mixed with that, with like the classic, classic British, the first wave, the British invasion, with the Beatles and the Stones. My mom really liked the the uh, Beach Boys, so you had that classic American surfer sound and the rockabilly stuff. Mm -hmm. Throw in some Western songs, and then you have you know vocalists like um, singers like. Uh, well, the Western sounds like Johnny Horton and things like that. But then uh, when I when I think about classic rock, um, here, I have to cut this because I can't, I can see his face. He was in the Traveling Wilburys. He sang, you know, Pretty Woman. Um, Jesus. Oh, jo Roy Orbison. Roy Orbison. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, growing up listening to him and the Ventures and everything. So I, yeah. I there's a whole bunch of, you know, CCR. CCR, yeah. Just just the whole gamut of music mm -hmm. growing up with. So I have learned to appreciate all kinds of stuff. But the Stones, I mean, they they're still around. They 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 just had a tour <laughs> la like last year, I think. Um yeah. you know, sixty years in the making. You know. Um and uh, yeah, I just don't I mean, I don't think any other band has been around as long as they like modern band, longevity. -wise. I don't know if they can even live live that long. I mean, Keith Richards probably died 30 years ago. His body just doesn't yeah. know it. You know, he's just embalmed himself. He's just going to mm -hmm. go on forever. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, great choice. I Mick like Jagger. It. Yeah, I, I, I think we've we both have brought in a lot of, a lot of uh, ones we're familiar with. I'm not the Pantera fan you are, but I totally get it. I, I totally can appreciate the passion that and the energy that you put out in every performance mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if it's a half-filled audience you're gonna give who people who showed up for you you're gonna yeah, make that makes an impression it. yeah that really does mm -hmm. make an impression yeah okay. so now kiss is finishing up their last tour we got to get you to see kiss sometime <laughs> you know as much as i rag on kiss i i, I could never deny the 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 performance that they put on their 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 overall the oh man I, yeah I'm, I'm I'm the theatrics no, no I can't the theatrics the the yeah. just the whole package like this yeah you know, whatever you can't deny that like they put on a show it's a mm -hmm. spectacle that's the word it I'm is it like, really this, is and this 
they wanted to go out on top. One of the and biggest they, spectacles in, it in is, all man. Of music, they, man. And they 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 kind of make fun of like the rock bands that came out and kind of looked at their shoes. You know, I think they're making fun <laughs> of the whole like the grunge uh-huh. movement. You know, they said, "Look, we we want to we're going to blow you away." And like that's why they're the kids who grew up with them in the seventies are bringing their kids and their kids because they say, "If I was a little older, probably if I was a little bit." Yeah, you know, older when they were in their heyday, it would have clicked mm-hmm. with me. It's I just, think so. They never yeah. quite clicked. Right. They were kind of past their prime when I was really getting into metal. Right, but in the mid eighties so. and and late eighties, they changed. They went all disco y and they went just right. awful in an awful direction. Yeah, and they didn't really come back until probably Revenge, um, in the early nineties. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, the, their heyday by the time seventy eight came around, they they had peaked. So from seventy. 72 um to 78 they had like you know five five really solid years and uh you know they're yeah, putting i think out i just missed time. them i was a little right. too young at the time when yeah. they were really were hit, hitting their stride and really becoming this this huge thing and, and now it's just become world. part of like making fun so i get it you know yeah like, yeah like, no it's just i have right. to do it now <laughs> yeah right yeah you, you've been doing it for 50 years you know it's like 45 years like yeah i get it man it's it's still like i understand but um I know you can appreciate their performance. They they really do put 100%, on a show that yeah. that is unlike anything that you would ever ever see. Other mm-hmm. bands have come along and and, but they are not the first ones to put on that kind of theatrical show. I mean, you look at other bands like Alice Cooper, who was I think the original shock rock mm-hmm. guy who put on right. yeah. the makeup. He did the horror themes. He did you know right. guillotine. He you know hanged little people. He had the, the boa constrictors and all that kind of stuff. And Kiss kind of put on the kabuki. They did the blood spitting and the fire and those kinds of things. It was a different thing. But then you know David Bowie and all this kind of all this kind of there was a lot going on in that kind of bigger bigger yeah. rock. But they've maintained it. And while they are certainly not the kiss they were in the day, these guys are 70 some years old, still going out there wearing 30 pounds of shit on their bodies <laughs> and putting on a two hour show. Yeah. You know? you so I got to respect that. I can't imagine either of our dads going out there and doing that <laughs> shit for two hours. Can you imagine that? No, no. You know, your dad's putting on, your dad's Paul Stanley and mine's Gene right. Simmons. It's like, <laughs> it's like, no, no, I just don't see that happening. No, uh, grandpa, great grandpa is gonna go up there and make up and yeah. platform shoes, <laughs> spitting blood everywhere. You know, you know? yeah. Uh, There's something with the blood. It's a the young blood, man's game. The blood is different than what it used to be. I'm not sure what he what he does now. The blood formula is different. It doesn't like stick to his face like it used to. It like, kind of runs oh, off. That's a shame. It is, man. Because I remember you having like... those like Kiss Alive album and looking at all the pictures. Yeah. And oh, and Kiss the Alive too. Yeah. Oh, you had the Kiss cards, didn't you? And I had the cards. The I had the tattoos. The blood dripping yeah. down his face. Oh. Oh, you fucking know, awesome. Skin's all covered. Yeah. I remember you just, uh, yeah. And then the heyday when they were, when they had taken their makeup off, they would, we were like trickling out little bits of Kiss live performances. And back in the day when I was still a fan of Gene Simmons before the incident. Before the um, <laughs> and, uh, and I would just love watching him the whole the, spinning, the slapping. Yeah. The, the belly incident. The slapping. The slapping. <laughs> yeah. Gene Simmons, if you want to come on our show and apologize for being such an asshole, you're welcome to. But otherwise, nah, it's okay. The We're snubbing good. and the <laughs> snubbing and slapping. Yeah. I hope my belly haunts you all your days. <laughs> he probably, he's probably got erectile dysfunction ever since. <laughs> yes. He's trying to trying to get it on and like he just sees no. my belly being slapped clap, 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 slow motion. Clap. Boom, boom. <laughs> boom, boom. He's like, no. Rip the ripples. Oh. Yeah. Or maybe it arrives just at the time where the vinegar strokes come in. He can't stop. Like, no. Oh. Yeah, Gene. Think of my belly, you bastard. Uh, you ruined Gene. <laughs> uh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> Woo. Hey. Uh, anyway. Anyway, hey, you can find Heavy Metal Horror on unsaneradio.com. Listen to full episodes or download to your device. You can find us on Facebook, Heavy Metal Horror Podcast. On Instagram, look for Montag Lewis. One word, our YouTube page, Heavy Metal Horror Podcast. If you're watching, that's where you're at. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you know someone who would like our show, tell them about us. This has been Montag, Master of Illusion. Dreadbull and Reggie. And Reggie. Setting in for Chop Top. That's right. I prefer Way better Reggie. looking. Yeah, exactly. Way better looking. <laughs> and a bigger penis. <laughs> and you've been watching and listening to Heavy Metal Reggie. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this is Doug Helbring, and you have been listening to Heavy Metal Horror, the best podcast that you've never heard before. <laughs>